If you are playing a buzz where you have like, let's say three in one hand and like five in another hand, the one with five is going to have more compressed sound within the same amount of space as the three. So you're gonna have an uneven buzz roll. We don't want that. What we want is for your hands to be nice and even. I worked on three strokes by doing that and then doing both together. And the reason for that is because you wanna hear that popping sound so you can hear that your hands are even. Cause you don't wanna have like a flam sound with your three strokes when you're working on it. Cause then you'll play with a pulse, have a slight little sweep from the outside of the drum to the center of the head. And the reason for that is so that you play the loudest note of the controlled bounce on the softest part of the head or softer part and the quietest note of the controlled bounce on the loudest part of the head. So it actually makes it so that you have a very even sound. I was extremely skeptical with this because I was like, why would I want to play concert snare with like my hands? kind of sweep in with the threes, but it sounds so much better. One stack of five stacks of percussion books that I own and that I have worked through and would just like pull out one and be like, all right, we're gonna sight read through this for like five, 10 minutes in the day. And so I would just go through every single one of these and just keep sight reading, slowly getting better. The more you study, the easier it becomes. I've literally got a few more stacks this big on my bookshelf back there. This is just one of many. Slash gear on my website. You can click on percussion and then this takes you to some of these books that I recommend. This is how I worked on my sight reading, doing it over and over and over. That's it. There's no secret to how I've gotten good at things in life, whether it's my aim in Fortnite or like being able to play fast or being able to sight read. It's just the amount of reps you put into it. If you wanna build muscles, guess what? You gotta put in the reps. If you wanna build your sight reading, guess what? You gotta put in the reps. You just gotta keep practicing it. So I do it for sometimes like an hour a day, like just sight reading, brand new stuff. Generally speaking, this is not like a, hey, this works for everything. In rudimental percussion, your grace note is going to start at the height that is your rest height and go down from there if you are playing on snare and tenor. Regardless of what your primary height is for the accent, your grace note height, always start at rest and go down from there. With concert percussion, the grace note as half the height as the primary note, so it's more audible. So it makes it so that you can have a thicker sound because what is a grace note? It's basically a broadening of the sound. If you're doing concert snare, you might do it like that. And as you raise and lower your height, you raise and lower the grace notes with it. Whereas in rudimental, the grace note always stays there. If you're playing bass drum, your distance between the grace note and the primary note is going to be greater depending on the size of your head. If you're on a smaller drum, you're going to play with a tighter flam than if you are on a larger drum, it's going to be more open. Why? Because of the vibration of the sticks or vibration of the head. Whenever you hit the head, if you do it almost like you would like on a snare drum, it's going to pew, just shoot it off to the other side. So you have to have like, gada. that's a very exaggerated version of that. Same thing with concert percussion. So if you're playing on timpani and you have a small timpani versus on a large timpani, you're gonna have smaller distance between the grace and the primary. And if you go to a larger note, you're gonna have a larger one. If you're playing it one hand at a time, you're not necessarily gonna be able to get that direct comparison of like, well, which hand is higher, which one has more volume, etc. So if you play them as double stops, you can actually hear this popping sound and you can actually hear and see whenever your hands are at two different volumes. So the pop sounds different and it looks different. So all of these exercises on this particular playlist, the isolated double stop variations have that in there. So like the diddle strength one, this is a great way to work on strengthening up the second note of your diddles. So every single one of these exercises where it asks you to play with B, so both at the same time, you're specifically trying to get those hands to balance out. I get comments from like people who clearly have only studied one way of playing who are like, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> Whether it's like, you need to use more finger or you need to use all wrist only and you're like, forearm shouldn't move etc. It's interesting how people don't ask, well, why are you doing this way? Because like I've played finger technique. I've played rotary match grip. I've played wrist only. Guess what? When I played wrist only, I popped a vein here. I got early signs of tendonitis and carpal tunnel, etc. Like there's a reason why I play the way that I do. 
and it's all about like longevity. The people who are like, you have to do it this one way. It's like, well, why? What is wrong with a pinky coming off of the stick? When is it wrong should be a better question. Coming off right here, is that wrong? What about here? It has to do with the tension in the hand. So if your pinky is coming off this far, you're tense right here. Pull it off a little bit. What does that do? Oh, it actually gives your hand and the stick some space to breathe, which makes it so it vibrates. If the stick is vibrating, that gives you a fuller sound quality. Instead of the sound going into your hand like this, because you're choking it off, it's instead going into the head if you relax it. So the pinky coming off visually looks bad, but as long as it's not creating that tension here, is it bad? A dude that I marched with whose like fingers were like this much longer than mine. And so for him playing snare, guess what? He needed a little gap here. Cause if he like with his extra long fingers were to hold it and have that nice closed little grip right there, then for him, it would be like playing like this, like a fist, as opposed to just like a relaxed approach with snare. So like everybody's anatomy is going to be different. I've had the privilege of studying with several really cool people who are really good at what they do. And they all told me different things. Every one of them. They're like, your technique should be like this. And then the next one would be like, your technique, no, it shouldn't be like that. It should be like this. And guess what? They were all really good at what they did. So if you study with more people, you'll learn what works for you and your anatomy. The triangle fulcrum gets rid of some of the tension. If you use a floppy wrist like this, and then you squeeze with these two fingers, then try and make your wrist floppy, you can't do it. There's tension right here. As soon as you make this contact, and squeeze that causes tension in your wrist and your wrist can't bend. So then you're just relying on the finger technique here, but it creates the tension inside of the wrist right here. I want to get out of the way of the stick moving and just let my hands move naturally, some anatomy. So I have this really weird hybrid technique where I'm using a little bit of molar. I'm using a little bit of finger. I'm also using a little bit of rotary French match grip that I learned from timpani. So like first learned like this and then eventually learned it this way. And so this is what I used on timpani. It gives you a nice full sound. It makes it so that when I'm playing, I'm not just going straight down into it. I've got a slight rotation in my um, forearm. That gives it a little extra speed, a little extra power. But I also, when I'm playing faster, use a little bit of finger. Combine many different approaches. And again, learn from different people and go with what works for you. One thing that I highly recommend for anyone who's practicing is record your practice sessions and listen back to it. Because what you hear when you are playing is gonna be very different when you are actually just sitting there listening without having to worry about playing because your brain is not focused on all the little nuances that your hands are engaged with. You're instead just focusing on listening and you'll find all sorts of mistakes that you wouldn't have heard when you are practicing. So flat accent builder. Adds in one note, grace note here. Next measure is gonna be accent. Another one. Now phlegm accents. And then we're gonna take away one right hand for each line. So if this exercise is too fast or too slow to you, don't worry, you can slow it down as slow as 40 beats a minute or as fast as 200 beats a minute, one click at a time, timestamps in the description of every one of the videos. And you can find this play along on my YouTube channel under the drumming content on the home tab. I've got all the playlists neatly organized. This one is under the technique exercises, which currently has 62 videos.